<laughs> Welcome back. Our essential question today is, how do I use imaginary and complex numbers to solve quadratic equations with complex roots? That's a mouthful. That is. So be sure you write that essential question down. And now we're going to do a little recall here. We're bringing back section 5.3 and 5.4. Remember, we were still solving quadratic equations, and we were finding the roots or the zeros or the x-intercepts, and they, they are, are all, all the equal. Thing. The solutions were real solutions. So we got a real number as Correct. an answer. Correct. Okay. And a parabola was formed that intersected the x-axis at two points. So here's our axis, mm -hmm. parabola, intersected at two spots. That's exactly right. Okay. Or we had a vertex on the x-axis if there was a double root. Okay. So that so means that the vertex... Exactly, and that's a double root. This section, we're talking about non-real solutions. So if you look at the graph in front of you, mm. notice that parabola does not cross the x-axis nope. or touch it at all. No. When that is the case, there are no real solutions. Okay. And then we have to start talking about non-real solutions or imaginary numbers. Okay. So I'd like you to highlight one thing because yeah. we're going to cover it in the next section or next page. Notice it says an imaginary unit i is defined as, do you see that? Mm -hmm. The square root of negative 1. So we're going to highlight that. i is equal to the square root of negative 1. That is important to remember. Okay. And now we go to the next page. So an imaginary number, let's talk about what that is, is the square root of a negative number. That's it. You can't really take the square right. root of a negative number. So whenever you have okay. a negative under a square root sign, it means you're going to have an imaginary number. Okay. I know what a lot of you are going to do. You're going to grab those darn calculators, and you're going to type in a negative. Square root of negative whatever. And you're going to get an error. Yeah. And that it, you should. So I want to make that clear right now. Can't so, use your calculator. Mm -mm. Not on these. Okay. Uh, so let's try an example. Yeah, Should we just, just jump, jump right to it? To it? Yeah. it the, the question says, express the number in terms of i. Okay. So right away, the minute you see a negative under that square root, mm -hmm. you're going to break that apart because the negative refers to a negative 1. Yeah. Right. And then you ask yourself, what times negative 1 gives us? 36. 30, it's negative 36. 36. It would be a positive 36. And let's bring that 2 out front yep. so they know we don't forget it. Now we're ready to go. Okay. So notice Miss Boyd broke out the negative right away. Yes. Well, the square root of 36 is? 6. Right. So we can bring down the 2, and we're going to multiply that. Yep, because this means multiply. Yep, by 6. This is 6. And we just said the square root of negative 1 is equal to? I. I. So really, exactly. So then now the 2 times 6 is? 12. And your answer is 12i. Now, some students want to say, well, shouldn't it be plus or minus 6? No. Mm. The square root of 36 is just 6. The only time you're going to get a plus or minus is when you're taking the square root of x squared. Okay. When so you're when solving an x, equation. Exactly. Okay. Should we try another one? Yeah. Because this is a little different. Yeah. So right away I see a negative, so I'm going to take out the negative mm -hmm. 1. And so then I have to multiply it by 12. Exactly. Well, this time 12 isn't a perfect square. Right. So we have to break it down. Even more. So I've got negative 4, or sorry, Positive square four. root of 4 mm -hmm. and square root of 3. Right. And we still have this negative S Square one. root of negative so 1. So I'm going to bring it down so right. I don't forget about it. Well, what is the square root of 4? We know that's 2. two. Square root of 3 it's doesn't change. Square. And we know and the square root of negative now. 1 is i. I. We always like to bring it in front of the Thank square Thank you. Yes. yes, exactly. So your final answer would be 2i square root right. 3. And there is a reason for bringing it in front of the square root, and that's because a lot of students like to extend that square root sign and think the i oh, goes underneath, and, and it does not. So I really want, we both want you to put the i in front of the square root. Yes. Okay, right. let's go to the next page. Well, look at this. We're oh. on to something different. Now, back in the last two examples, we were expressing a number in terms of i. We were right. solving, not solving, we were um, simplifying, simplifying an expression. We are yeah. now solving an equation. equation. So the minute you see x squared, the I, I want to take root. the square root of it. Right. Square root both sides. 
those cancel, but now since we have an X. X comes out, and the minute that happens, you get a plus or minus. minus. We talked about this a while ago. Yep. Now we can separate that up into two parts. The square so root of 36, square root of 36 and, and square root of negative 1. one. Exactly. And plus or minus, right. Well, we know that the square root of 36 is equal to? 6. Right. So we have... Bring the plus or minus yep. down. And that's and just I. Is I. And you are done. So we're done. We'll circle our answer. That's all we're doing. Nice. So let's scroll down. Um, do you want to do this, this one? This one's really easy. Okay. Yeah. We just want to get the x squared by itself. Right. So first we have to move the 48. Mm-hmm. So we're left with x squared equals negative 48. And you're going to take a square, square root. Now we're going to square root both mm -hmm. sides. So those cancel. Right. Square root. So we're left with x. And since we square rooted the x, we have right. a plus or minus. Right. Square root negative 48. And now we can break that apart. break it apart. Do you have any good numbers that will work? Oh, well, oh, yeah. Oh, you want to do that first? Before? Okay. Yeah, the, the good numbers that work are 16 and 3. And you may ask, well, how did you come up with that so quickly? Three. And then square root of negative one. one. What you're trying to do when you're splitting that apart is come up with a perfect square times another number that gives us 48. Yes. And so the perfect square four. that works is 16. Right. Square root three i, but we want to bring the i up front. Right. So yep. our final answer is x equals plus or minus four i square root three. And we'll circle that. And one thing I want to mention is, let's say you would have chosen um, not square root of 16 times 3, but you would have said, oh, 4 goes in there. 12 and 4. That would work, but, but you then... then you'd have to break the 12 you, down again. Right. You'd have to just keep going a little bit longer. Okay. Let's see. This one, what do you think? Let's leave this one for class. Leave this one for class. Yeah. Okay. So now we're on to a different part of the lesson. A complex... We talked about imaginary, an, an imaginary number, mm -hmm. right? That's I. A complex number is a number that can be written in the form a plus b i. Exactly. So you have a number plus an imaginary number. Right. So a now this is very important. A and b are real numbers. So this and mm -hmm. this are real. And i remember is equal to square root of negative one. Yep. Yeah. And that's, you can write it there, and it's also written up there. So we talk about real part and imaginary part. So what happens is A and B are real numbers. A is considered the real part. Because there's of, no imaginary attached to it. Right. And B times I, so the B in that case is considered the imaginary part because it's multiplied by I. Gotcha. Okay. I just had to rewrite it. it sure. Weird. So I'm going to scroll down and see what it says here. So two complex numbers, A plus B, I, are, oh, this is important. Two complex numbers a plus b i, are equal if and only if their real parts are equal and their imaginary parts are equal. Okay. That is important. We're going to use that in the next part of the lesson. Okay. So A is the real part and B is the imaginary part. Got it. Example six. It's asking, find the values of x and y that make each equation true. Okay. Well, we gave you a little hint here. It shows what's the real parts. And what are the imaginary parts? So what you're going to do, remember, on the, I'm going to scroll back one yeah. second. It says two complex numbers are equal if and only if their real parts are equal and their imaginary parts. So we so have to, them. right, so we have to set the real parts equal to each other. Okay. So we have to set 2x equal to negative 8 and solve for x. Okay. So I just divide by 2. And x equals negative 4. Right. Now we're going to set the imaginary parts. And does this negative go yes. in? Yes. Okay. So, negative so negative 6 is I. not oh, i, though. Remember? We're just setting the real the, parts the, of the imaginary Right. So a is Got the it. real part and b is the imaginary part. Got it. So negative 6 is equal to 20y. Got now we divide it. both sides by 20. And we get a fraction. Right. And, it's not and, going to equal. No. And that... We will reduce mm -hmm. that fraction three to, tenths. yep, 3 over 10. So now it's, what's it asking? We just answered it. Yeah. Let's circle our two answers. It said find the values of x and y that make it true. There's our y value and there's our x value. All right. So we have, let's see how many more we have. 
Should we save Let's this save one for one class? Here. Oh, so nice. here we go. Video question one and two. Express the number in terms of I. Which you can do. And then solve the equation. Oh, easy. So please answer both video question one and two. Fill out the Google form. Submit it and we will see you tomorrow. Bye.